Norton. Norton here. Sean Keneally. Here. Hi, Sean Keneally. Oh, good. Uh, Lori Gibbons, Harbor Master. Okay. Says Town of Cohasset. Oh, that could be anybody. That's that's uh, Lauren, I think. Okay. Uh, okay. Su Hello. <laughs> Su Susan Bryant. I with cat. Oh, you're here, Susan. Oh, you and your cat. Okay. Susan Bryant is here. Uh, Lisa Hewitt. Present. Matt Marr. Present. Uh, Paula Curran. Present. Jeff Hartwell. No. Barbara Canny. Here. Great. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Uh, we've got a number of things we'd like to cover. Uh, and Lauren, if you can see when uh, Carlos Pena comes on, if he is, that would be, it'd be good to know when he's here. He is on. Oh, he, he is here. on. Okay, good. Tim, uh, I will, um, I'll pay attention to the attendees, and if there's anyone that should be a panelist, I'll promote them. I believe Jeff Hartwell is here, and that he was just in the attendees section. So. Oh, Jeff Hartwell is here? I am here. Sorry, I was on mute. Okay. Earlier. okay. Think something. Thank, thank he you. Was as, he was on the attendee. I can promote to panelists. If you need me to promote anybody else, just let me know, please. Okay? <laughs> All right. Well, that's, uh, that's great. Um, is, uh, Linda Litchfield was going to be taking minutes. Is she here? She is here. She is here? Yes. Okay. So if, if you and Linda could just make sure that you know that we do have a quorum, we have everybody who is here, that, that would be very helpful. Um, so the first item on the agenda is the minutes, which I uh, sent around. We have minutes from, I believe, the last three Harbor Committee meetings. Uh, the way we do this is I'll ask for a, uh, a motion to approve the minutes as read. We'll get a second, and then if there's any discussion, we'll have that. So may I have a, a motion to approve the minutes as, as written? I Sean Keneally, make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, second. Okay. Any uh, comments, any suggestions, any modifications? To those minutes. Hearing none, uh, may I have a vote, please? I don't think this has to be a roll call vote. So, all in favor of accepting the minutes as written, say aye. 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 I think that was a majority. I think any any nays? No. I think we're in good shape. God, I'm getting good at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next uh, next meeting, I think what we'll do is postpone setting a date for the next meeting to see uh, what transpires over the course of the next uh, 30 days. Uh, I know that this time is particularly difficult for some of you and we'll try to find a time given the fact we only, the town only has two, uh, I believe has two Zoom accounts. So we have to, we have to vie with 30 other committees and boards, uh, but we'll try to do it later, uh, later, which would accommodate those of you who are working from home or working at all. Uh, so let's get into the discussion. Uh, has Lori joined us yet? Lauren has, uh, has Lori Gibbons joined us, Harbor Master? Let me check again. <clears throat> Unless she's, she may have called in. I don't know what number. Uh, uh, I don't see her on my, my screen, but. Uh, I see her. Okay. I knew she was, she intended to, I know, because I, I'd asked her to be available for this part of the, the agenda when we're talking about opening up the harbor, but we can we can start the conversation and then uh, we'll see how how we go. Uh, the uh, what I really wanted to make sure that we did as a committee, seems how most of the uh, the cohort groups uh, in the harbor are represented on the committee. Uh, people that use the the, the harbor, uh, how to best deal with opening up the harbor for the public. 
Uh, the state has sent around uh, a, uh, a protocol, which I've sent twice. One uh, Lori sent to me and I forwarded that to you. Uh, but then I did another one. Uh, uh, Chief Sylvia sent it to me today. And he had just gotten it today from the state. So that's the most current. I think they're pretty close. Uh, and it deals with both commercial and recreational um, boating in a, in a harbor like Cohasset. Now, Cohasset is a little bit unusual in that, number one, it's a very small harbor. And number two, there are a lot of different constituent groups that are using it and from time to time interact with each other. From what I can see in going through this, and I'd like to hear comments from, from those of you who have thoughts on this, the biggest way that we can deal with this is uh, number one, the standard uh, face covering and social distancing. Number two, no congregating, if we can avoid congregating at places where people normally do congregate, which are on docks, piers, boat ramps, parking lots, and so forth. Uh, I just got an email from the harbor master saying she's here. Thank you. Lori, can we hear you? Are you, Lauren, could you see that uh, if you've got the harbor master or Lori Gibbons, I'm not sure which email she can she can uh, speak when, when we have a question for her. Anyway, I think the main thing is, again, social distancing and face coverings and not congregating. I guess the question is, and, and some of you, particularly Matt, as a commercial fisherman, you, you understand how the commercial fishermen interact with the general public or the recreational boaters. Uh, and, Lori has uh, has indicated that that is minimal. Uh, would you agree with that, Matt? Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, it's very very minimal. Okay, very, so we, uh, very uh, minimal between the between the fishermen. Never mind the, uh, the fishermen and the, <laughs> and the even when they're on the boat. Right. <laughs> so uh, so at both Government Island and uh, Lawrence Wharf, they, they, you don't get a lot of interaction with uh, recreational boaters. No. Okay. No, very, very little. And and if and if there was any interaction, it would be uh, certainly from a safe distance. Certainly from a safe safe distance. Now, in your opinion, are the commercial fishermen following the protocols of face covering? As far as anybody else is, I don't think they I don't think they're probably any different than anybody else. They, uh, if they're coming close in contact with people, they probably put the masks on. But I don't think that. I don't think they're wearing them uh, like, uh, you know, when there's nobody near them. No. Well, that's it. I mean, I think the, I, th I think the protocol is if you're more than six feet away, then it's. Right. it's I, think, I think we're in this, we're in this thing uh, long enough to know what we, what we need to be doing. Uh, I don't, uh, I think every, most everybody is doing what is required of them, uh, requested of them. Uh, okay. I don't see any difference though. No. Well, that's that. That's great. That's that, that's what I would expect. And and Lori reported that uh, she felt that the first of all there was minimal, and secondly they would be uh, they would be cl complying. Uh, uh, okay. Does anybody else have any thoughts about the use of uh, the town owned? infrastructure, government island, the different docks, uh, the boat ramps, uh, how, whether this protocol is adequate for the use of those facilities. And I particularly, I, I'd like to hear from CSCR because Lisa, you use, uh, or Susan, you use, uh, I guess the boat ramp to launch a lot of uh, uh, craft and so forth. And then there's, uh, We'll get into the private ones later, but any comments on that? Do you want me to go first to Susan? Um, actually, um, Lisa has a more robust board than CSCR, so they have actually had a lot of time to um, develop a plan. Um, Jack Buckley has been t talking to Pam Fahey. We've laid throughout the whole situation. Um, 
but our biggest um, concern down there is that the bathrooms are, um, you know, have door handles as most bathrooms do and um, we want to make sure that that um, is dealt with in a safe way, not just for our clients, um, but for everybody who uses those and um, uh, that should not look like uh, me and Jack and the coxswains cleaning the bathrooms. Right. So how do you, uh, how would you like to handle that? How do you expect to handle that? Um, it, if, um, I'm not sure if you can unmute Jack Buckley, but he's on the attendee list and he could talk about what he's talked to, or Pam, what you've talked about, um, or Lisa, I don't know. I, I have not been part of those conversations. Yeah, I haven't, uh, we haven't uh, talked about, Pam, hi, I've never met you. I'm Lisa. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Uh, Lisa and I, uh, I'm involved with CMI and the delegate um, on the board. Um, we haven't discussed the bathroom issue, uh, but obviously that'll be a very important issue to not only the members of CMI, but the neighborhood and also to, um, you know, any passerby. It's a public bathroom. It's used by all. It's not just for the two groups that are um, presently using that area. Um, so I think that's a bigger issue. Um, but Pam, maybe Jack or Pam can tell us what they've talked about already. Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. I, I know that um, Jack expressed his concern about that, and um, Glenn Pratt, who's the emergency manager for town, had said that Jack shouldn't be doing it. It should be, be like a professional, and perhaps the town would take over control of that. But then I just kind of saw the conversation, and Jack, did you talk more about that with Glenn at all? No, I, I haven't, but <clears throat> I thought that that was the uh, – town recommendation and that's what I advanced to Tim in an email and I would feel most comfortable if the town were to assume full responsibility for the bathrooms um, because of the obvious conditions. I think it warrants that uh, business as usual is not business as usual and a new approach needs to be um, instituted mm -hmm. if the uh, if the bat, well, let me just say this. I'm not opening the bathrooms at all. I'm not playing any active role in cleaning the bathrooms. Um, so the town should be doing that. Okay, so let's and I see. would open the bathroom. I mean, obviously, the bathrooms will stay open. All I'm saying is that I'm not going to assume any responsibility for them for the obvious reason that... Um, they 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 need a lot more attention than they tend to get okay so uh pam this is something we need to uh wrestle to the ground here right we lock the bathrooms to the the public or we figure out some way to keep them uh appropriately clean right so just so everybody knows we have um kind of almost like an emergency management leadership team that consists of the two chiefs, Chris Sr., myself, and Glenn Pratt. And we've been talking about everything from JJ's dairy opening to, you know, all kinds of issues and stuff. And so we'll, we'll talk about this one as well. We'll put this on the, the list. Okay, thanks. Uh, Bob, Sylvia raised his hand. Can you unmute him? Yes, thank you, uh, Tim. Um, just so everybody's aware, obviously we're about to enter a brave new world in the fact that the governor just yesterday uh, rolled out his four phase plan for reopening the Commonwealth. Uh, part of this is going to be very, very, very structured in regards to this. Some of these things that you may or may not worry about, may have to worry about, may be outlined very, very quickly within the next week. And that would include such a thing as a public bathroom. Uh, a public bathroom is absolutely problematic from a standpoint of, you know, you could clean it incredibly well once a day, but then the moment somebody that happens to be contagious walks in and leaves stuff behind, you've lost whatever you did. So there is, there is a, a bunch of things that are gonna have to be addressed. And I think slowly but surely, um, to be very honest, next Monday, it's not going to be flip the switch and let's go. Uh, next Monday, there's going to be some very baby steps that apparently are going to be taken. And if anybody had an opportunity to see the governor today, he pretty much 
alluded to just that fact that let's talk on the 18th and I'll give you some idea of where we're going. But right now there is nothing that we, that any of us know anything about. And we're, as Pam mentioned, we're wrestling with this every single day. Uh, and we, I kind of look at this and I don't want to, I don't want to hold you guys up, but I look at this at the same way we went in the other direction. It was a day to day event. So that on the 12th of March, we were doing one thing. And on the 14th, all of a sudden, the world came to an end. So you just don't know how to roll it out in the other direction. And it's confusing, too. I was on a DPH call before this one. And as you probably know, they let golf courses open up this week with restrictions. And one of the restrictions was that the clubhouse has to be closed, and you, including the bathroom, has to be closed. But then today, they kind of backtracked a little bit and said that they can have porta potties out there. Well, I, I don't really understand, honestly. I'd rather go in the, inside and use a clubhouse anytime than no. use a porta potty. No. So um, it's why I, I can't answer your question now. You know, it's just. It just changes every day, as the chief said, and uh, you know, we'll have to kind of just figure this thing out. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's great. Well, thank you. Um, so, uh, Lisa, CMI is going to kind of wait until... Yeah, why don't I tell you what we've been doing, Tim? Um, you know, since this whole thing started and we realized that we were going to have a very difficult or non-existent summer, um, we've been meeting every week, if maybe two or three times a week, trying to figure out how to go forward. And fortunately, we have a lot of experts on our, um, on our board, one of which is a, um, uh, a virus expert at MGH, who is a member of our board, who has been giving us some really great information and trying to track all these different issues. And the bottom line is, we all know, there is no answer to most of this. Um, we are trying to figure out if there's any way we could possibly have, you know, four people on a boat. It's very doubtful at this point. Uh, we are trying to figure out if there's any manner in which to, um, you know, clean or sterilize any of the equipment. I mean, this, it, it's all the questions that you're all, you know, grappling with. Um, but we are trying to keep our membership engaged. We're, we've dispatched a, um, an indoor erging program. We, we took all the ergs and have them out in the community. And we have, it's amazing how you can erg on Zoom. <laughs> you, can, you can learn from a teacher on Zoom. But what I'm trying to um, explain is that, uh, we are trying to take all the steps that, and do all the reading and look to obviously us um, federal, state, and, 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 and local municipal you know, regulations and look to you for guidance um, and put together a plan as best we can. And so I'm glad we're having this meeting. Um, and thank you for putting this together, Tim, in addition to you know, all our other issues as the Harvard Committee. Um, we are in a different place because we do have four people very close in a boat. Uh, we have talked about, we've closed the boathouse. Uh, we changed the locks. Um, only a few of us have the code uh, for emergency reasons. Um, and then one of the teenagers has been allowed to go in, period. Um, the bathrooms that, that um, Jack brought up, uh, you know, I was involved in helping keep them clean for a couple of summers. It's a nightmare. There is, and I know I'm, you've already covered this, but it, even if we didn't have COVID, that's an issue that has to be um, grappled with because there's a massive amount of use of those bathrooms with, um, you know, all the boaters, all the walkers, all, I mean, and it's great. It should be a public facility, but it, it has been unbelievably tough for Jack and uh, CSCR and CMI to take that responsibility on. But, you know, we, we're happy with the stewardship of the building, the property, but it's, it's, a, it's a massive problem. So we're looking to you to help. We, we, and, and we want to know that we're, you know, we'd love to meet with you individually as a group or as a whole group, or, you know, it will follow direction. But, um, and we are not cowboys by any stretch of the imagination. We are very conservative and we really want to make sure that this is safe um, for, because of the proximity, especially, I mean, even a Cox is sitting there and the first rower is 18 inches away. So, um, and it's pretty hard to row with a, you know, with a mask on uh, for all the reasons that, um, you know, people are being asked to row and run and, and uh, with masks on. So um, I'll, we'll have more to report in the future because we are developing guidelines. We're also handing them off to other rowing groups. We're also happy to share with any of the guidelines or any of the information that we're putting together for safety on the water. Um, and once again, we have a lot of very salty people on our board. So that's been um, a help. Thank you, Lisa. Uh uh, I know that the Yacht Club and uh, the Sailing Club are, are looking closely at, at their facilities and how they're, they're going to 
uh, operate in this environment. I'd like to jump to uh, the issue of fasting speech. Uh, I know that Debbie Shad is, is with us. Uh, uh, how Right now, as I understand it, most of the people that use Basing Beach and particularly the facilities that uh, the Cohasset Conservation Trust has there use uh, Cohasset infrastructure to, uh, to access that. Uh, how is that going to be handled? Uh, seems how we don't, we in Cohasset really have no jurisdiction over there. Uh, perhaps somebody can uh, enlighten us as how that's going to work. Debbie? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I mean, obviously, the town has control over the town locations where people launch, you know, their boat or a kayak or, you know, illegally swim across from. Um, so that would be a town of Cohasset issue. I mean, to the extent, whatever the public use of those facilities is whatever's permitted, you know, I assume you can use those facilities to go over to Bassing Beach. It's a, it's considered a semi, uh, forget if it's semi-public or semi-private, but it's, it's essentially a public beach. People go over there and use the beach. They walk, they uh, pull up a boat. Um, it, it, I thought there might be someone from the town of Situate on this call, but it doesn't look like there is. So I don't know if our health agent has heard any guidance about that would be applicable to Bassing Beach from a health agent point of view. Um, obviously we can put up signs. We have signs identifying it as belonging to the Cohasset Conservation Trust, not obviously the entire beach, but um, to a point beyond the breakwater. And we can add signage, putting whatever the recommendations are which as you've all been saying keep changing by the day um, but assuming this next advisory has the basic social distancing recommendations we can add signage to that effect um, we need to communicate with the Bessing Beach Tenants Association about the cottages but um, I think it it seems pretty clear that they probably shouldn't be open this year at all. Um, but that's something we need to discuss with them. Well, uh, is, uh, is that something you discuss with the owners of the cottages or is that situate? We are the owners of the cottages. You are the owners of the cottages. So, yeah. okay, yeah. So you'll make that decision then. You will make that decision very soon. We're sort of waiting for this next de deadline to come and go next Monday see if there's any guidance, but um, I mean, I certainly noted what was just said about um, the boathouse being closed mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the cottages usually open. Uh, did I just lose Tim? No. Okay. I lost the picture for some reason. Um, they usually open around Memorial Day or just before, so we need to make that decision pretty quickly. We have not held a lottery for this year's weeks or anything. And um, personally, I, I just don't think it's gonna happen, but uh, we'll make a final call on that probably very early next week. Okay, thanks Debbie. Uh, uh, and the one other thing that kind of goes along with it uh, that is in situ, it is the sandbar that goes out along uh, Cohasset Channel. Is there? any way or is Cohasset going to have any responsibility for uh, dealing with that because that you know as soon as the warm weather gets gets here uh, on a on a low tide that's going to get crazy up any thoughts on how we're going to deal with that well isn't there a some kind of a mutual agreement between the town of Cohasset and the town of Situate with respect to responding to things that happen on Bassing Beach. My understanding has always been that when there's been an issue, if, you know, if someone's injured out there or 
uh, there's a, an assault or anything like that, that the, it's the Cohasset Police and Fire Department that respond to that under some kind of an agreement with Situate. Am I wrong about that? No, I think it is a, it's a, uh, an understanding. And Chief, maybe you can talk to it about from the fire perspective. Uh, yeah, we we will obviously emergency services will roll over there whenever we need to, meaning either fire and or police. And Laurie, as a rule, and I don't want to put words in her mouth, but Laurie, as a rule, is the one that pretty much oversees that operation that goes on out there. Um, what we're looking at is we're not so much worried about the folks from Cohasset or even from Situate, but people come from where, from all over, and people are going to be looking for some place to go. So it's, it's more a case of, um, as I mentioned to Tim earlier today, it's about educating the public in regards to what the expectation is and then holding them accountable for it. And the regulations or the order as it stands right now says no rafting of boats and people shall maintain social distancing. So all we can do is try and enforce that piece um, and educate the public in that regard. Did Laurie get on? Because I, I, I had an email from her a little while ago. She, she, was, she couldn't get in, but I thought I heard someone say she got in. Yep. Can you hear me? Oh, good. Can, you, can anybody hear me? Yes. 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 Can, this is Laurie. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, Laurie. we can. Yes, we can. We can hear you, Laurie. Okay, good. Finally. Um, uh, fortunately, this year, low tide is working in our advantage. Uh, when the tides are low in mid, the mid part of the day, the low tide is about a foot above normal low tide. So the sandbar is really not going to be an issue with people. You know, I don't think it's going to be your typical year where you see 200 boats all lined up out there because they're not going to have the time available on the tide. Uh, when they, you get the good minus tides, it's, you know, 7 at night and 7 in the morning. Uh, so that, I think, is really going to work in our favor. Um, so it'll just be a matter of trying to keep people from rafting up uh, once the tide comes in. And that's something I think that, you know, it is easily addressed. And people will uh, try to uh, be... Um, aware that they have to uh, distance. Going back to um, Bathroom Beach and the, um, the cottages, Debbie, I have a real concern about um, the cottages being vac vacant all summer. I think you're going to have a real problem with vandalism out there, that the kids are going to realize that the small cottage, the big cottage won't be a problem because I can see it easily from my office, but the small cottage, you can't see it. And I think the kids are going to get in there and it's, they're going to trash it and it's going to become an area for partying if they realize that they're not open and there's nobody there um, managing the properties. So I think that's something that maybe your group could address and possibly just allow the Bassing Beach Association people to use the cottages for this year, if they were willing. Right. I mean, you know, I've thought of that too. Obviously, we can do perhaps a better job of installing extra locks and stuff. I, I mean, that's why I was hoping perhaps one of the health agents could... I, I, I'm just not sure, you know, we can safely have multiple groups of people out there, you know, on a rotating week schedule, even if it's just members of the BBTA, because they, you know, they can't be effectively clean to any standard that people would expect right now. <laughs> um, so, you know, again, we need to sit down with representatives of the BBTA. I was kind of waiting for next Monday's guidance to do that and hoping to hear anything useful from the health agents. But, uh, you know, I, I just think at this point, what we know now, I would think from a public health point of view, 
you know, even if you just limited it to BBTA people, and even if you just did every other week or something like that, I, you know, I, I think the risk of something happening is, is there. If you have just one person in some extended family that becomes infected and is out there. Um, so I think, I think it's a real concern to this, you know, it's the way I'm feeling right now. Um, I'm not speaking for the entire board, but I, I've talked to enough of our board who have the same concerns. I'm just not sure unless things change from a public health point of view within the next month or month and a half or something that they could really safely be opened just from the health, health perspective. I, and I get that, I get your concern, Laurie, about the opportunities for vandalism. And I mean, I had been thinking in terms of perhaps having a very small number of people in charge of from the BBTA checking on the cottages regularly. Um, we could certainly try to interface with someone at the yacht club because they, the cottage, the small cottage can be seen a little bit better from the yacht club and have someone let us know if they see anything happening. Um, obviously we can check on it too, but certainly no one can be there 24 um, seven. So I don't know if any of you have thoughts on this, but. Uh, well, there are security uh, systems that could be installed uh, that are solar powered security systems. I mean, I don't know whether that would do anything, but at least it could uh, keep an eye on it. I mean, that's just a thought. Uh, it's yeah. a tough one. If it, it's a tough one. I don't know whether you, you know, limit it to single families for a month at a time or, uh, or however you would do it, but uh, that is a tough one. But you yeah. will, uh, I'm sure working with, uh, uh, working with Lori and working with uh, uh, Pam Fahey, I'm sure you'll you'll come up with the uh, the most appropriate way to deal with it. I appreciate what you have to deal with there, Debbie. That's a tough one. Okay, I'll go, and Lori and Pam, I'll reach out directly to you sometime this week. Great, great. Okay. Excuse Lori, me. Do you have any other uh, any other comments uh, about uh, opening up the harbor and and how you were how you're going to handle the the protocols? I'm just going to follow the protocols that the state comes out with and any additional restrictions that Pam wants to put in place. Um, I can enforce all those things. I can educate the public as I see them, um, as I do now when I see, you know, a boating violation. Um, I really, I don't think we'll, you know, I don't think it's going to be a terribly busy season this year. I think people are going to be pretty low key. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe there'll even be fewer people putting their boats on their moorings this year. I don't know. Okay. Are you, uh, are you going to have transient moorings? Yes, I'm going to do transient moorings, but no rafting of boats. Right. I've already told one group that wants to come, uh, in August that I'm not sure if I can accommodate them because it's a, a large number and that there will be no rafting in the harbor this year. Right. Good. Okay. But your you will be your transient warrants will be available. So you will have guests that'll come as, as appropriate. And they most of those transients don't use the town infrastructure, do they? I mean they they generally have their own dinghies, but uh there's not a lot of traffic onto uh, either uh, Government Island, the piers there, or any of the other piers? Uh, no. Uh, the only time that they really ever come to the town docks is one to get rid of their trash or uh, to uh, go to one of the area restaurants, and we don't know what's going to happen with those. So, uh, right. Um, yeah, there's very little interaction. Okay. All right. Uh, are there any other uh, questions or comments about uh, uh, this issue of uh, uh, managing the harbor during this period of time? Anybody else have any yeah. comments? Yeah. Hi, Tim. Uh, hi, everybody. Just a point of information. I've tried to figure out about the jurisdiction on passing speech. Um, there was uh, Charlie Wood's a good friend of mine, and he goes back a ways and he believes that there at some time there was some kind of uh, 
uh, protocol or uh, understanding, but we've nobody's been able to find it in writing. So at this point, um, Situate does control basking speech for law enforcement, their harbor master, and their harbor master also, there's a police boat. However, they have not been spending a lot of time coming over to take care of it, so it has fallen by default for, for Lori. But I think that's an issue that at some point um, probably we, we should see if we could get some kind of understanding. Well, as, uh, as you may know, uh, Lisa and Lori and I uh, started on a journey to have a memorandum <laughs> of understanding with Sidgwick yes. for all of that. And uh, uh, once the oyster wars uh, heated up, that kind of felt fell by the wayside. Hopefully, I'm aware of that. Can, uh, if we conclude the oyster war wars, uh, then we can get on to uh, dealing with all the other governance issues that are very important as neighbors uh, and sharing a harbor like this. But we will mm -hmm. we'll do that. In the meantime, uh, I think it's right. It is a it's an unwritten but uh, understanding between Situate and Cohasset that the Cohasset harbor master has jurisdiction and. Uh, when it's appropriate, she will call in uh, fire, police, emergency, whatever. But that's, is that correct, Lori? Is that the way you understand it? Yes, it is. Um, that's the way I've always handled it. Yeah. Um, and I'm still researching that topic, and I <laughs> am getting close to getting the answers. Well, uh, if it happens in my lifetime, please let me know, would you? <laughs> Okay. Uh, any other comments about uh, this issue before we move on on the agenda? Yeah, I, I just think it'd be great um, if Pam, you know, once you get a, maybe a better sense of what you, you think with Laurie, et cetera, and, and the other town officials uh, is going to be the standard, if you could, you know, connect with all the different organizations and maybe have a, a briefing for all of us, because it's, it's really also helpful for us to be able to tell our members, because, you know, oftentimes people think that we're being you know, too conservative, and there's nothing like saying, uh, you know, this is what the town is saying, period. <laughs> so thanks. Yes. Yeah. Um, well said. Can yeah. I quick question? Just like mom said, you know. <laughs> or maybe this is for Pam or Tim, I'm not sure. Um, but there's been con a little confusion, maybe just on the Yacht Club side, on to whom do we submit, or do we even need to submit an opening plan so that once we do get the green light from the town, we can slowly start phasing into allowing our members on our docks. And how do we go about that? Or do, is it the Harbor Committee thing? What, what's the next step, I guess, for us? I would so, suggest, Paula, that you submit it to Paula and to Lori. They're the two that really are most actively involved in this. Well, I was gonna say, it would be great if, if you submitted to me as well. In fact, each individual group would be great to get a plan from all of you mm -hmm. guys, because I don't know enough about your individual activities, honestly. So it'd be better for me if you could just explain to me like how, what, what your different activities are and how it would, you could meet these state guidelines doing what you do. So for example, for CSCR, I did get a good plan from Jack Buckley and he kind of outlined when we do this activity, we're gonna wear masks and gloves and then we'll, we'll sanitize these different surfaces. And so that kind of thing. I mean, I could actually pass out kind of an example health and safety plan template to people just to kind of give you an idea of the flavor of what we're looking for, like a one or two page kind of thing, just kind of addressing all the different um, ways that you do your activities in a way that you can do it safely. That would be great because we're, um... We're very close to having a plan with the, you know, obviously waiting until Monday, but we are in line with everything that the town wants with the, and we agree to the face coverings, the social mm -hmm. distancing, the sanitizing. So we have a whole protocol on paper, um, but we're just not sure, uh, like I said, to whom we kind of pacify and when. Um, okay. Yeah, definitely. You could pass it by me. And then it can change and evolve as the summer progresses and things change, for sure. Like I have health and safety plans from all the different contractors in town. Okay. And, um, you know, obviously I, I've, I've got plans from restaurants and what they're doing. And so it's okay. kind of just runs along the same thing, definitely. Well, you know, I'm chairing the um, task force for the Yacht Club. So maybe I'll email you if that's okay. Sure. Get the documents and then I'll start pulling it together with the task force and then I can 
um, kind of be the point person if that's okay and start. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Is this something that we can start before the 18th or do you want to wait until the next? Um, you, you want to kind of see what we're thinking about? Yeah, why don't you send at least a draft? Okay. And you're yeah. right, there's no sense kind of finalizing anything until the 18th and we see what okay. comes out. But right. um, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, Paula. Thank you. And we can do the same thing for the sailing club, Pam. Okay, yeah. great. Thanks, Sean. I think it's worth understanding that um, under a public health emergency, um, our health agent really does have a lot of authority on this. So um, submitting it to uh, Pam, I think, makes a lot of sense. And then we have a central spot. If she says it's okay, then it meets the health emergency criteria. And also Lori as well. So she gets a sense of... Yes. Right, that. definitely. Um, yes. Okay. And Pam, maybe what I'll do is try to... We have a draft... Um, plan unfortunately with this crowd it's not three pages it's like 23 so <laughs> but i will ask them to synthesize it and uh, uh, maybe we can uh, set up a call or a conversation sure that'd be great, that'd be great. thank you terrific um tim if i could just um speak very very quickly as part of those plans um obviously the guidance that we're receiving right now from the commonwealth is fairly restrictive I do not believe it's going to get any worse, and it may lighten up as, as things go along, as the summer goes. We're not quite sure. But when you put these plans out, it's also the fact you're doing the plans. Could you include whatever signage or examples of signage that you're going to use as part of your plans? Because one of the biggest things that we've, that we've really worked hard on is getting signage out to people as part of the education effort. We, you know, I mentioned it earlier, it's education versus enforcement. And mm -hmm. most of the folks that we're dealing with, whether it be uh, cloth face coverings or whatever, is once they understand the, not only the what, but the why, they have pretty much come into line by themselves. So it's, it just would be very helpful if you could explain exactly, not just what your plan is, but how you're going to educate the public on your plan. Absolutely. You know, uh, U.S. Sailing, not to pull it to sailing, but um, they have this really cool, very brief, they call it the 3W protocol, and they call it wear, wait, and wash. And they go, if you can remember that, wear your face covering, wait six feet, and wash your hands frequently. That's their motto that they're pushing. Um, nice and brief, pretty easy, and then you obviously can explain further. But we're keeping that in mind with everything that we do at the club. So That's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, Chief. Your your point is education as opposed to enforcement. I'm sure we don't want our harbor master going and asking for ID of everybody in who's in a boat to see if they're part of the same family. That's that's probably not a good use of her time. Yeah, I would completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and I know uh, Tom Norton. You had some concerns about that. Uh, the uh, uh, are you on, Tom? Uh, I am now, yes. Okay. You had some concerns about uh, people uh, not in the same family being in a boat. Well, the regulations, yes. uh, the yeah. current protocol says no, uh, but I think that, you know, what you're going to have to do is people are going to have to have to be educated as to why that is what it is, and then, you know, we're going to do the best we can to educate them. We're not going to be out there arresting them for having uh, people in the boat or not in the same family. So uh, I don't know how best to convey that to the people that had that concern, Tom, but I'll leave that up to your good. No, no, I will. I think their, their point, you know, when they reached out to me was they understand and respect that this is obviously a fluid situation and things change daily, hourly. But they're just wondering, is there, are there data points that they can watch and see when this is going to be, or are we talking about, you know, this is going to be a, for the summer that kind of once it rolls out, get used to it, and this is how it's going to be, or is it going to be like you mentioned, Chief, that these things are going to change? That's the only thing that I think as a board and as a town, we can communicate to the folks here that we're learning as you are, and we're going to adjust and modify as we learn and the information is given to us by the state. I just think there's a lot of obvious uncertainty where a harbor town, people have only eight to 12 weeks to use the boat at the most. And um, they understand it's an extremely serious health situation, but also 
you know, they want to live their lives. So they're trying to develop a balance. And I think um, if we could just communicate to them that this is a fluid situation. And unfortunately they're looking at a lot of people looking at it like, wow, I'm, I'm not really going to be able to use my boat this summer. And I don't think that's what we're trying to communicate, but no. um, if we could keep that open, that would be great. Well, it will be a fluid thing. And that's what, uh, uh, that's clearly what the governor is doing. Uh, and that's what we will be getting. Uh, Susan Bryant raised her hand. Susan, do you want to, you have a comment? Yeah, I just had a question. Um, and I also want to thank um, Pam and um, Chief Sylvia and the others who are on that emergency preparedness team. That's, that's excellent. I'm glad you guys are doing that. Couldn't ask for more than that. Um, but my, so my question is maybe doesn't have to be addressed now, but um, wondering whether there is budget for additional signage or any of that other, the other things that you want us to implement. Um, we definitely want to be a team player at CSCR, um, but uh, if there's if there's money available to make signs, that would be better than us taking it away from kids. Okay, well that's good. Why don't you connect with Pam and and uh, uh, she'll help you with that. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes. Tim, can I have a one last comment? I'm just um, thinking about the summer and opening of any season. Um, it can get crowded down here in Parker Ave as far as people launching boats. Um, and we're usually excited about it. It's cute. All the local kids sell lemonade to the people waiting in the cars trying to launch. But this summer is going to be a little different for obvious reasons. It, you know, is there any thoughts about having a detail down here or anything just to, you know, friendly, officer friendly, uh, you know, I'm a public defender. I don't believe in prosecution, <laughs> but uh, just to have a, someone being a little bit more in charge than normally, because it can, it can get a little bit um, crowded and, and uh, you know, we're a, little, we're a little concerned, you know, because um, we have hundreds of people walk by our house every day and we love it. You know, we bought this house knowing that, but we just wonder if there is any thought or, about having, um, you know, maybe for like July 4th weekend or, you know, uh, the, the beginning of the season to have some sort of assistance down here to help people do the right thing. Well, I think, uh, you know, we're going to, again, we're going to have to play that one as it happens. As Lori said, she thinks that the uh, use of the harbor will be diminished considerably this summer. Uh, so I, I think if you notice that, uh, that things are getting a little bit out of control, that if you let either Lori know or uh, the, uh, Chris Sr. or the chief of police know, then uh, I'm sure they can they can address it. What we don't want is people getting out of out of hand, particularly congregating in large groups. That that really is the one of the big problems. Because yeah. typically, at least from my experience, what I've seen, uh, not just in Massachusetts but around the country, is when you get large groups, there are portions of those large groups that don't follow the protocol, don't wear face coverings, and and certainly are not social distancing. So that we got to keep an eye on that. We've all got to be aware and alert and and let the town officials know if you see something like that going on. Okay. Uh, Tim and Lisa, just on that point, um, you know, we had a report that uh, some kids maybe hang on the back deck of the sailing club, and we've done everything we possibly can. We put signs up, we put boats actually on the yeah. back deck, we put ropes, ropes up, but we, um, our Commodore Deb Jumps, Deb Johnson um, contacted the police department and they were fantastic. And, you know, I was down there putting some signs up with my kids and uh, the lights went on in the car, you know, the police officer came out, what are you doing? And they're taking walks to the sailing club three nights a week. So, I mean, three times a shift. So the Cohasset Police Department's doing a fantastic job and we really want to thank them for everything that they're doing. Great, that's terrific. No, I understand what I'm saying. I'm not, I mean, people are excited. They like to see friends that, you know, it just is a natural inclination to, to want to go by the water and to see a neighbor, to stop for a minute, you know, and then the five feet becomes three feet becomes the dogs over here. So it's just, it's just, it's problematic. Great. Okay. Any other final comments before we move on to the next part of the agenda? Jim, can you hear me? It's Lori. Jim? Yes, Can Lori. you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah. um, I've got uh, last week, um, the Maryland governor opened up um, voting for their state. And I have their guidelines here. And it's, it's for this season. And it's voters uh, must be with the immediate family members or people with which they reside. No more than 10 people can be on the boat at one time, including the captain and crew. 
boaters, boats must be distanced from each other by at least 10 feet and are prohibited from rafting up, beaching, or having rendezvous events. Boats are prohibited from docking at restaurants or bars. Vessel and boat races remain prohibited. Marinas can reopen to recreational boaters, but adhere to health guidelines. Pump out stations and boats may resume operations. Uh, local jurisdictions may choose to open public boat ramps, but must encourage social distancing guidelines and that all normal boating regulations are enforced. So that's what Maryland is doing for the year. Mm. This is their final decision. So maybe this is something that, you know, our governor will also be looking at. Great. Could you send me a copy of that, Lori? I'd just like to have that for my file. That would be very helpful. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Um, okay. Let's All hope right. that doesn't come uh, to Massachusetts and that we can be a little bit more creative so that we can have some sailboat races where you're not touching anybody mm -hmm. and all you need is a race committee and buoys. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'd like to move on to the rest of the agenda. So uh, uh, we've got Carlos Pena here who is, uh, who's been working with us as the town engineer uh, or the engineer the town has uh, contracted with on a number of these. And Carlos, perhaps could you give us an update on, first of all, the Parker Avenue boat ramp uh, renovation? Where do we stand with that and what's, uh, what's sure, happening? Tim. Thank you. Well, um, good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's staying safe. Um, on the boat ramp, I'll just run down the list and I'll tell you exactly where we are. So all the borings we've contracted for are completed. Sediment tests are completed. Surveys completed. The initial design in the coffer dams completed. Notice of intent that was filed is completed and the MEPA filing was completed. At our last meeting, we talked about trying to construct the boat ramp in the wet. And as if we had conversations, there's going to be a challenge, not an impossibility, but a challenge permitting it. And they also foresee that the quality of construction where it's going to be in the wet is not going to be what it's going to be in the dry. So if we can accept those there might be a way to save a little bit of money. One of the things that we talked about was that if we're able to proceed and, and permit and design both, what I propose we do is that we um, put it out to bid, Alt 1 is dry, Alt 2 is wet. And that way that gives the town full flexibility when control of the budget and what they want out of it, depending on what the price is finally come in at. That's the last thing we talked about. Yep, that's good. That makes sense. When do you think we'll have that be able to do that? Right now we're waiting. Uh, and I know this, this, you know, this whole epidemic and pandemic that we're dealing with, we're just waiting to process some paperwork through the town so we can proceed with the re-permitting and, and redesign of the coffer dam in the wet. Process the paperwork through the town? Yes. Uh, who, is the, who is doing that? Is that Michelle? Yes. Okay. And I understand it's been it's a difficult time to do all this, so I, I, I understand. We actually just finished the second sediment test today because of the coronavirus, so everything has just slowed down a little bit. Hopefully, we'll pick up again right now. Okay. All okay. right. Can I just ask, um, I'm wondering if you happen to have any roles for interns as you go about all this, because there's plenty of students who have come home from college and are sitting around with nothing to do. And if there's any opportunities to involve youth in what you do, that would be an amazing opportunity for them. And we'd, help, we'd love to help you reach out to them if that works for you. Hi, there might be a way of doing it. Years ago, we did a couple of um, title projects in Quincy and they involved the, the local high school students and that turned out really well, the science department. So I can certainly follow up with that, with that suggestion and see if there's a way we can, we can make that work. As a matter of fact, we're doing a title study and we had the students monitoring different tide gauges at different parts of the town, so we could correlate all the information. And out of the group, I think we've, we've, we've created one good engineer out of that entire group, so well yeah, worth that, it. That's what we do, and we already have some students who are studying civil engineering, too. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, I'll reach out through Tim, and right. we'll see if, if something can come together on that. I'll, I'll connect you. Uh, Carlos, can I, have a, can I have, ask a question to Carlos? Please. Um, have there been uh, uh, negotiations with uh, abutters in regards to the, uh, the ex expansion of that uh, 
of the boat ramp, uh, 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 an easement uh, to make the boat ramp wider? Is that? Uh, I've, I've, made, I've made the town aware of exactly how much is needed, and I know there's been, I believe there's been conversations between Mr. Trenderwitz and, and the town. But there hasn't been any finalized, any, no? I, I, I'm not familiar with that. I know that we've, we passed along what the requirements were for how much land we would need, and, and I can follow up on that. So are you planning on the, on the ramp as a double wide, or, or is it, is it, is you, are you planning as of now as a single? Uh... Yeah, it's a, it's a single 16 and a half between curbs. Uh, the two constraints we have is on the uh, west side we have the pier, and on the east side we have there's a small clump of marsh there, and there's also the top of the slope from uh, Trendowitz <coughs> Marina happens to coincide with the location of the ramp. So there really isn't any, any, any possibility of expanding it closer to the east because of that slope, potential slope. So, so, that, so, so you're saying that that's out, the easement uh, with Trenderwood's land is out? Is out or? No, it's not, it's not out. It just, we're, 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 our understanding right now is that we're proposing the 16 and a half foot ramp that's curb to curb mm -hmm. and that um, there hasn't been any, any issue that I'm aware of between the town and Mr. Trendowitz about the easement. And I can check with Michelle again tomorrow. That meeting we had a couple of years ago, he was, he was all for uh, working with the town to, uh, to, you know, maybe, you know, uh, trade off some of that. I thought, you know, that maybe yeah, but I think that'll work out fine because the edge of the, 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 the riprap or the, or the uh, uh, trap stone that we're placing around the uh, boat ramp will extend onto his property. Oh, okay. So, okay cool. Those are the kind of things. So the boat ramp will be right on the edge. The the, the, the six foot wide um, band of uh, trap stone will extend onto his property. So that's why we need we'll need the easement. But I believe that conversation has been had, and I haven't heard anything negative about it. And I'm I'm, I'm I'm sort of proceeding, assuming all is well. Like what I'm going to do tomorrow is just check with Michelle and make sure that is okay. Thanks, Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Uh, uh, Paul said he was going to join us, although I don't see him on the, I don't see him here with the participant. But, uh, and I can also check in with Paul tomorrow, so that's not an issue. Okay. All right. All Thanks. right. So Government Island, if you'd like me to move over to that. Uh, yeah. We completed a boring out there. We completed a survey. We completed an inspection. Uh, and then we, uh, based on the borings, you might be aware of it, you may not be aware of it. The, the wharf itself is, is constructed, obviously, of grouted granite blocks on the perimeter, but the interior are, are just remnants, from what I can gather, of when they built the lighthouse. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but as we bore through it, we've got pinkish granite, and then we get down to the natural granite, and that was more gray in nature. So I believe that it's, and that's why we've had issues over the years with sinkholes, but I think the town's done a great job at maintaining that wharf in its present condition. And the wharf itself is in reasonably good shape. Uh, what we're gonna propose to do, as we've discussed before, is maybe add a pier section to it with a hoist, or take a look at the, the gantry hoist in the middle with some sort of conveyor belt system. So to that end, I'm 98% done with the full condition report, which is due this month. And I just need to confirm a couple of unit costs. And Tim, I'll be able to share with share that report with you before this week is out. And then I've also been in touch with the Seaport Council. And they have uh, rescheduled their next round of funding deadline for June 1st. And they've encouraged us to try to apply for some matching grants, which would be matched 25% by the town. They are now funding, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the initial work on a project which includes the permitting and design. Good. So, well, so that's a very that's a very positive thing. So I spoke to Ellen today and she encourages us, if we were interested, to file by June 1st and ask for a certain amount of money to develop this project beyond just the feasibility study. Terrific. Uh, Carlos, I have a question for you, Carlos. Yes. Uh, the last meeting we had down up here, um, you said that we – it, it's going to require a, a chapter 91 uh, permitting and uh, we don't, we haven't found the permit and it was going to be up to a year to, uh, to uh, discover the permit or apply for a new permit. And, uh, and that's one question. The second question is, uh, and my request uh, early on, uh, if uh, 
my request was to include uh, some uh, uh, fisherman representative in the design process to make sure that if if and when we do design a pier, that uh, it's it, it's workable for the fishermen that use it. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let me I'll respond to both of them. Permits. At this time, we have found no permits or licenses for the structure. We've gone through DEP. We've made requests of the core. We've checked with the town. We have found nothing. Supposedly it was built in, I believe, is 1847. I could be corrected for that date. That's what I was able to find on it. So um, we're still, if there are no permits, then we'll have to license both the wharf, the floats, the gangways, and then whatever structures we add to it. So we have that, we'll have that. And I believe it's a great idea as we develop the design, once we get the grant from Seaport, to work with the, with the local fishermen and any other stakeholders to make sure that whatever we design is obviously acceptable to hopefully a majority of everybody who's going to be using it. So, Matt, I completely agree with that with that suggestion. <laughs> Thanks, Carlos. Appreciate it. Right. Hey, Carlos, are we we're still looking at a year to get the permits before we can start anything? Yeah, the permits. Well, the, the next couple of things we we'd apply for the Seaport grant. We would hopefully be fortunate enough to get the Seaport grant. We would then uh, get into the design process. We have one more boring to do out in the water, depending on where we're going to put the pier or the hoist or whatever we do out there. Then we'll start the, the preliminary design process. Once we all decide what we'd like to build out there, then we start the permitting process. So probably, so the permits are probably nine months or so. This will probably take another six. We're talking two years or so before this is this is completed, more or less. Okay, all right. And I like to think it in, in permit years, which seem to be a little bit different than you know regular life years. I know. Well, it seems it's getting to feel like my life year here. It's oh, I, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Yeah. Okay, so you'll oh, keep that and you'll work with Michelle and push this along. I will. And, and, and what I'm going to push on over the next week is to get the Seaport grant together. So Tim, I may need some input from you and from the town to put that grant application together and get that in. I think that's key to get that done before June 1st. Yes, it is. All right. Okay, that's Tim, great. can I ask a yeah. quick question about the, the funding on this? Um, uh, I'm intimately involved in this funding for my state agency that I work for. Um, and I know that the, we're talking about anywhere between four and $6 billion of a deficient upcoming budget for the state and the money says it's going to come back to, you know, through the cherry sheets, through the, to the town. Um, do, is, is there money, if we were lucky and fortunate enough through um, Kyle's good work to, to get the Seaport uh, grant, is there, uh, will we have enough money otherwise? And I know that's a huge hypothetical. Yeah, hypothetical, I, I, but right. Um, well, know. it's probably more. It's probably a little more real than anything else. I, I did speak with her today, and I didn't specifically ask her about whether there would be funding, but she did encourage me to apply. Yeah. So by default, I would say it's probably worth our effort to 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 put the application in. I also asked if we're not successful in getting the grant for whatever reason this summer. Well, does it roll over until such time as we do? And she said it does. So once we're in the system, it's just a matter of time before something happens. And it's the best system we have right now. Years yeah, ago, good. as some of you may have worked with, the DCR funded the, the, uh, the initial work, the seed mm -hmm. money for most projects. Mm -hmm. And that funding has gone away. So now I believe that Seaport's picked up, the, picked up the tab for that now, for the responsibility for that. Right. Thank you. Okay, All right, thank you. Um, can, when I went to the Seaport uh, Development Council meeting in, um, I don't know, November, December or something, and it seemed um, from what I learned at that by the presentations from the different towns that it's quite important that the town coordinate all of the requests to the Seaport Economic Development Council at once because it's unlikely that a town would get more than one grant from the Seaport Economic Development Council at once. So I think that all of the requests for that money should probably go through um, Chris Sr. Well, uh, it seems how the deadline is June 1st. There can't be many of them that are uh, in the queue at this point. So uh, uh, Chris certainly is involved. It goes through Michelle. 
Michelle reports to Chris. Uh, so Chris is certainly aware of it. Right, but I would say that every um, member of the Harbor Committee probably has an interest in some aspect of um, public funding for different projects. Well, as we look at, you know, reinforcing our structures and whatever we need to do looking forward, I think that that really needs to be coordinated. If you do, then uh, I think Michelle is the one to coordinate it with at this point. She's the one that is handling that. Uh, certainly, um, uh, Lauren, as a representative, uh, to the Harbor Committee will help with that as well. We've talked about grant writing uh, and those are the two people I would suggest. Yes, Jack. Yeah, um, let me just make sure my audio's on, yeah. So I just want to second what Susan was saying in that um, I have um, spoken with Pat O'Connor's office, Senator Pat O'Connor, and uh, he and his staff met with us about talking about um, some plans for CSCR and public building. And I met with Chris Sr. about that. And um, Chris had told me that he wanted the uh, town to have a coordinated application. So I don't know where some of these important infrastructure parts are that were just being discussed. I don't know where they are in the process. And obviously there's a lot of important infrastructure needs that will be addressed through Seaport uh, grants. But I do just want to be on the record of uh, seconding what Susan said and saying that there's um, great needs throughout the town. And in my last conversation with Chris, he did say that he wanted to have um, a coordinated approach so that we didn't have multiple constituencies vying for the same um, possible grants out of Seaport Council. So just Good wanted time. to add that, thanks. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's true. Lauren, did you have something you wanted to say? Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to, I can't speak for Michelle Leary and I know she was supposed to be on this call but I, I don't see her here um, and I haven't heard back via email. But uh, I don't know the extent of her work on this particular application. I'd be happy to follow up with her and Chris on this tomorrow and, you know, relay your comments back there. So I'm sorry, I don't have more information at this time, but I will follow up. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. Hi. Right. Thank you, Tim, everyone. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you. And Tim, I'll call you. I'll probably call you, call you tomorrow, right? I'll be here. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Distancing right here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, there are a couple other items on the agenda I wanted to cover, uh, uh, and I'm not sure whether we have the appropriate people here for it, but uh, the first one was security lighting in the Cove. Now, uh, I have talked to Brian jo Joyce about that. I talked to Chris Sr. about it just recently, uh, and we were gonna try to figure out how to put uh, baffles on the existing lights, uh, working with the neighbors and do a test to see if baffles would work. Um, we did go through the drill of, of getting a, uh, a bid on putting new lighting up there, LED lighting. Uh, that came back, uh, uh, it was going to be reasonably expensive. I think it was $20,000 to put new lighting there. Uh, the fact is that we have existing lighting that are there installed, just are not turned on. Uh, and the and what we were going to try to do is to create some baffling so that the lights uh, lit the harbor area and not the neighbors' bedrooms. And that was the the big big issue. Uh, Brian is not on here, and Michelle is not on here, so I can't uh, give you an update on on where that is but I will follow up with that and, and keep you posted on where that's going. Uh, the next one on the agenda is security cameras. Lori, are you still with us? Lori? Yeah, I, I'm here. Okay, where do we stand with the security cameras? I know you were looking at, uh, at what we could do there. I have to continue to follow up with the Mass Harbor Masters Association. Um, I did have a call in with somebody, and with everything that's been going on, it kind of fell by the wayside. 
Okay. Uh, is there something I can help you with there? Because I know we've been talking about that for a while. There are there is money to do that uh, from time to time, and uh, and certainly. Uh, yeah, it's not a very expensive thing to do. We just have to do it uh, appropriately and make sure the Board of Selectmen are involved as we do it. But um, if if you need some assistance in following up with the uh, Mass Harbor, Harbor Masters Association, let me know. We'll make sure that we can follow up on that. Yeah, no, I'll take care of it. I just, it's fallen by the wayside with me. Okay, well, I know you've got your hands full. Okay, uh, yes. Tim, do we have, is there a design um, for a, a plan? I know at one point you went out and had a you know a design to come up with a, a plan for the, the lighting in, in the harbor. Is is that available for, for this committee to look at? But oh, sure. Was, That's, um, yeah, it was the same. It was the same company that that, that bid on it, and that's the twenty thousand right. dollar design. Sure. Uh, and I'm sure that's available. Uh, uh, Brian Joyce has that. Uh, if you like it, I'm sure I can get a copy for you. Uh, that would be great because I'm just, you know, I mean, uh, I think it's has a good point about, you know, security and, and this and that. And I know the fishermen have really had a hard time with lighting, but I'd love to see what they're talking about because if I bet, I bet okay. you know, there's more and more and more lights, you know, so I'm just wondering what it looks like. Let's yeah, see. I'll talk to Brian tomorrow. Uh, Thank you. Tim, Tim has the design. Is it has the design taken our criteria into a, uh, into you know a concern? I mean, when you ask them to come up with a uh, lighting design, to, uh, do you tell them that all well, the fishermen need it at this and that we don't want them to be flying uh, shooting into people's bedrooms, that sort of thing? Uh, do they know uh, our criteria when they do this? Yes. Uh, well, they were sent. Uh, they were sent. Uh, 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 drawings of the harbor, uh, specifically the drawings of the harbor. So they knew the size of the harbor, they knew where the existing poles were, uh, and they knew that where the uh, residential areas were, uh, and they, their instructions were to design uh, a system that would light the, the harbor and provide security and safety lighting to the harbor without with minimal reflection into the residential areas. That was generally what their instructions were. And I think they came back with a good design. The problem was that it was $20,000 for a brand new system when we already have existing lighting there. And so at that point, and this conversation goes back now a couple of months, uh, we were going to try to get baffling on the existing lights to see if we could do something with that to accomplish the same thing at a much lower cost. Where where is the existing lighting? Well if you there's, there's one light it, on a pole there's one light on a pole maybe yeah, there are, I think there are three or four of them around the harbor down there in the cove area. Uh, they haven't been on they're, for they're, I, years. they're not plague lights they're probably uh, sodium vapor or mercury lights or uh, high powered lights. Um, if you could, you know, you could design a, you know, indirect lighting that would provide the, the lighting that we need without infer you know, interfering with anybody's uh, life, uh, you know. Well, Matt, I didn't it. realize, I didn't realize you were a lighting engineer, but now I know we'll be in touch. Oh. We'll, <laughs> we'll stay. I'm just saying the design, it's all in the design, uh, Tim, it's all in the design. All right, well, I, I will get you involved. You and Brian Joyce and I can figure out what we're going to do. Even if we go up there with cardboard baffles, we can figure something out. That's not a so anyway. <laughs> that's that's what I have uh, today. Does anybody else have anything else they would like to bring up to this August committee? Yes, uh, Lauren. I would just like to say, just circling back to the security camera issue. Um, if you haven't already, I would suggest reaching out to the IT director Ron Menard, and because I'm. If it's going to be a town-based system, it's better to have a conversation now. I'm sure he'll be some way involved in, you know, making sure it's secure, the connection and all that. So um, he might even have ideas as to what path would lead you down. So I can't speak to it, but I would suggest contacting him. Great. Well, that's terrific. If we can, if we can find the find the funding for it, uh, that's that would be great. And that's what uh, Lori was working on with the uh, Mass Harbor Masters Association. Obviously, we have to have it set up so it, it 
it works and communicates properly with whatever system it's going to be uh, tied into. Okay. Uh, Tim? Or say no. Uh, yes, Susan, are you skinny dipping or what? <laughs> Not uh, anymore. Okay, well, you have to skinny dip outside of the uh, range of the cameras. <laughs> Okay, and I'm sure you know where there already are cameras. So uh, Lori watches you skinny dipping off the government island there, Susan, so be careful. Any Tim. other comments? Jesus, Tim. Tim, can you hear me? It's Lori. Yes, Lori. Um, that lighting study, I believe, was just for the Cove area. Yes, it was. And it was not for the rest of the harbor. It was just to, to do the, the cove for $22,000 or something. Yes, you're absolutely correct. That's true. I thought I made that clear. No, it's, a, it's just for the cove area. I'm not, sure, yeah, Lori, I'm not sure whether there's a need for lighting anywhere else in the harbor. Is, are you aware of other, other lighting concerns elsewhere in the harbor? No, it's just the cove that's yeah. dark. That's what I thought, yeah. Okay. Any other uh, thoughts, comments, suggestions, recommendations, or is it time for a cocktail? I forgot. <laughs> Can I hear a uh, motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second? A second. All in favor? Um, thank you all bye. very much. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Jim, just want to thank, thank you, everybody, everybody again. Town. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Laurie. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, Bob. Bye, Bob. <laughs>